Okay, welcome back. After having taken a look at the uh, virtual volumes architecture, understanding some of the different you know parts to it, one thing to note here is that virtual machines are made up of objects, right? And the VMs are gonna be made up of different kinds of objects. We have config files, which represent the VM's home folder, virtual disk files, snapshot files, also the vswap file, and also the memory state file. Those are objects just like they are in vSAN. Here in virtual volumes, that's exactly what it is. A object in a VM is basically mapped into a virtual volume in your virtual volume data store. And the placement of these virtual volumes in the storage container is gonna be based on the policy you apply to that object. Right? Basically to the VM and all of the different objects that make up the VM will by default inherit the same, same policy. So, <clears throat> setting up these policies is again, selecting a set of capabilities as basic rules you want your policy to be applied to. One other thing to note, we added this feature in vSphere 6.5. This is with VASA 3.0, the ability to take array-based replication and map that into virtual volumes. That actually was a very compelling thing to add to vSphere since we didn't have that in 6.0. But basically what this is doing is typically you find if you've got LUN based replication, you're essentially letting the arrays provide the LUN replication. So the thing about LUN based replication is that it's the entire LUN. It's got no granularity at all, right? It's every VM in that LUN is getting replicated to the DR site, which is fine if that's what your goal is. But if you don't want every VM to be replicated, you're kind of stuck because with a LUN replication model, it's all or none, right? It's every VM that's in that LUN is going to be replicated. With virtual volumes with array-based replication, here we're basically providing replication from the array to array, but at the virtual volume level, not at the LUN level. So now you have a lot of granularity. You basically create virtual volume groups, and then you decide who's going to be a member of the different virtual volume groups, and they get replicated at a different replication point objective so that you can have all kinds of different granularities in how you do your replication. Very, very powerful capability added in VASA version three, which was implemented in vSphere, in vSphere 6.5. So yet another thing to add to a policy essentially, right? Because this is something that the storage is providing. It would therefore be a capability that would be part of the advertisements. So to find your virtual volume policies, you find them in the place where you find all of your policies. Go to policies and profiles in the vSphere client, and you'll find there actually is a built-in default policy for virtual volumes. It's called no requirements policy. Now remember, what is a policy? A policy is really just a collection of rules that are a subset of all the capabilities that the storage can provide. A no requirements policy is basically saying, yeah, we're going to, at least when you put a VM in a virtual volume data store, it's going to get a virtual volume policy. It's going to get this one by default, which basically means that we're not going to enforce anything. It's just going to go in that data store with somewhat basic configuration. So you're definitely going to want to create your own virtual volume policy. So basically what that means, you have to make sure that you have the different ideas, the different requirements you have an idea for. Remember, you can learn what are all the different capabilities by your virtual volumes storage provider. So by using your different virtual volumes and different VM components, right, you can have a whole variety of different granularities. A virtual volume that contains virtual disk data can have a rich set of uh, capabilities, or a snapshot virtual volume can use a different storage tier compared to its virtual disk level. So this is a little bit different than vSAN. In vSAN, the delta disk actually inherits what the virtual disk has. Here we can actually get even more granularity. Each object can have its own policy if you need to. So basically what you need to do is create a policy first, right? So you go into the new or create policy wizard. And again, remember you can choose whether or not you want to have any host based rules, but you know, one of the benefits of virtual volumes is a lot of its uh, overhead is offloaded onto the array side, but down here you'll choose which storage provider you would like to learn capabilities from. So remember, you always have tag based placement rules. They're always there, but if you have some storage providers, it looks like we actually have two storage providers, in this example, we have one called EMC Unity VVOL, and then we also have one called EMC VASA 10. So basically EMC VASA 10 is essentially storage that provides VASA, but it's not necessarily VVOL capable. But this other one called EMC Unity VVOL, that's actually a VASA implementation with VVOLs or virtual volumes already ready to go. 
So if we want to create a virtual volumes policy, you check that storage provider, and then that storage provider may then provide all kinds of storage capabilities, and you can choose the subset from there, right? Which of these particular capabilities you want your policy to be compliant with. So in this policy, we're basically choosing all usage tags, right? We're setting up, I think this one's silver tier. And you'll have uh, apparently as far as IO limiting, we're setting an absolute limit type with 500 maximum IOPS as a maximum rate, and a burst duration of um, five minutes over a per hour period. We're going to let the policy choose any drive type, even though the array does support all kinds of different disks, right? We have extreme performance tier. There is a uh, extreme uh, multi-tier. We have performance tier. So by checking any, we're not enforcing. We're letting the array choose wherever the disk goes. And then fast cache, we're simply saying it needs to have that enabled. Right? There's a whole bunch of different potential capabilities that we're basically selecting from the list of the items we want in this policy but the beauty of a virtual volumes environment is that the files that make up our set files, the, the native disks that make up your storage container. Well, obviously there's a whole set of disks that support these capabilities. The ones that we check are the ones in which the, the actual objects will be placed in. So here's a question. If the capabilities of your virtual volume storage array do not appear in the interface in the VSQL client when you're creating a storage policy for virtual volumes, right? So if you're looking for the capabilities, right? You're looking for this list and they're not showing up in those lists. Well, why are they not there? Well, it could be, or could it be that the tags are created for the virtual volumes? Maybe you need to check to see if tags have been created. Yeah, this isn't really tag related. Maybe it's that the virtual volume storage policy components are pre-configured. No, that's actually probably not to do it, anything to do with it either. Um, the virtual volume storage provider you have to check to see is the storage provider registered with vCenter. Well, that, that's probably a really good possibility, right? I mean, why we don't see these is that we probably don't see the storage provider in the list. So you want to check to see if I'm not seeing the actual list of capabilities, check to see if the storage provider that we are using has actually been checked properly. Could it be that the VVOL no requirements policy has not been deleted? Well, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. So in fact, it actually is the virtual volume storage provider. Check to see if it's been registered because if you don't have any actual uh, capabilities, it's definitely the storage provider isn't been listed yet. So in any case, this was a quick view of understanding some of the basics of the virtual volume uh, architecture, right? We took a look at the components that make up the architecture and you should also see the, you know, how the rule set for creating a virtual volume storage policy is actually implemented. So that ends this lesson. We'll take another break here and then we'll come back and take a look at storage IO control. So stay tuned, we'll see you in a few minutes.